We've just looked at manual level alteration or manual level automation at least and we saw how you can change the level of key elements throughout your mix to ensure that you've got a uniform level or dynamic range throughout the mix when you hand it off to a mastering engineer or indeed master it yourself. Now although this technique is really important and it allows you to control a large mix like this and get everything into shape we can also use actual compression across the entire mix to add another level of control. Now you want to be fairly careful here unless you're mastering yourself. If you're mastering yourself, you know, you can add this process, you know exactly what you've done. If you're handing it to somebody to master, then you probably want to ask them what's okay and what's not. So let's just close down the browser here so we can see the whole mix. But with this mix, I'm going to add some basic bus compression. There was a time when you'd have to use a separate compressor for this or put something into the rack. Now we've got the excellent bus compressor built right in. I'm going to just close the effects return here and you can see it in all its glory. It's really modelled on the SSL console, the G series master bus compressor. So it's got a great cohesive sound. It's very musical. There's very few parameters and it's really easy to set and pretty much anything you put through it sounds good. I'm only going to be adding a couple of dB of compression here. It's already engaged. I've just got the makeup gain turned down and this is because I was a little hot on the master output and this is quite a nice way of controlling that. Otherwise you'd have to go through every single fader and turn everything down. This is quite a nice way of just getting down to unity gain and ensuring that you've got no clipping. So I've got everything on peak mode so I can check for clips down here on the meter and I'm just going to play this section back. Now you can see the makeup gain. With it turned off I've got quite a lot more gain coming through the master out. So turned on, it just keeps it sort of down a little bit. But bar that, I've got it on a ratio of two. This is where I like to be. I'm not, I like quite a, an easy attack and quite an easy release. Pretty moderate on both of those. And then we can just start to bring the threshold down until we start to see some gain reduction. Now this is all good, but we probably want to be in a section where there's actually quite a lot going on. At least where the drums are in. So let's go back to where we were. Now we can start to bring the threshold down. And I'm looking between 0 and 4 dB of compression. You can see we get some clips without it there, but without the compression, it's breathing a little more. This, it probably doesn't sound quite as cohesive. It just adds sonic glue. It's excellent, even at this minus two dB. And you can go in pretty much up to four and still stay pretty transparent. I was quite happy with it around minus 12 dB on the threshold and getting about minus two to minus three decibels of gain reduction. So that's how I'd suggest setting the compressor. At least that's a good starting point and it's a good place to be if you're planning on mastering yourself, or just indeed let the mastering engineer know what you're doing. And uh, you should be pretty happy with this. I know that I, if I receive something like that, I'd be quite happy. I would just probably miss out that initial stage of, of bus compression and then master straight from there. In the last video, I'm gonna be showing you how to export with or without this bus compression, and also how to apply dithering so that your masters get to the next stage, the mastering engineer or the next stage of mixing in their best, best format.